our next speaker is Dr. Leah Barch from the Massachusetts General Hospital at Harvard Medical School. Um, Leah, I have um, allowed you to go ahead and share your screen if you'd like to begin. Um, Dr. Barch currently works as a postdoctoral research fellow at MassGen uh, Hospital, Harvard Medical School, in Professor George Lauer's lab. Um, her research interest is in T cell immunology in chronic liver diseases with a particular focus on T cell dysfunction in chronic viral infection. She completed her medical school in Lubeck and Hamburg, Germany. During her doctoral thesis, she investigated TH17s and Treg balance in the context of chronic inflammation and hypoxia. And before she started to work at the MGH, she began her residency in the Clinic of Infectious Diseases and Internal Medicine in Lubeck, Germany. And she'll be sharing their work on the identification and characterization of HPV specific T cells. Thank you very much, Emily, for the kind introduction. So I would like to share our HPV project or some of our approaches to analyze um, specific T cells in HPV infection. And I'm working on this project together with my colleague, Hannah Bush. So just a short overview um, of the topics I would like to share today. So first a short introduction about HPV infection and then our approaches to identify um, CD4 specific um, virus specific T cells in HPV infection and our approach to phenotype the T cells directly at the site of infection, um, in this case in the liver. So HPV infection is still a worldwide burden, although we have a vaccine available since decades. And in this map on the left-hand side, you can see the global prevalence of HPV, chronic HPV infection. And as you can see, it's mostly a problem in African countries where we also have the problem that the prevalence is very high in um, children under five years. The global prevalence is around 260 million um, chronic infected HPV patients around the world, and HPV is responsible for 900,000 deaths per year and can cause severe long-term complications like liver cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. I don't want to go into much detail about the virus. I just want to highlight some characteristics which are important to understand my talk. The, the HPV virus is a DNA virus and contains four different um, reading, uh, open reading frames and four different proteins which are potential targets for the immune cells. Name them as the X, the core, the polymerase, and the surface or envelope. Um, protein I want to um, highlight here. Another characteristic of the HPV um, virus is that it can build the CCC DNA, which can persist in the hepatocytes, so in the nucleoli of the hepatocytes, and can be responsible for viral relapses and cannot really be targeted by our modern um, HPV therapy. Another important characteristic is of the virus is that the age of infection really determines the outcome of the infection. For example, when we have an infection in infants in countries where HPV is endemic, most of the patients develop a chronic infection. And when we, um, in contrast, have an infection in adults in countries where HPV is not endemic, most of the um, adults are um, able to build up an effective immune response and to control the virus. To understand chronic um, HPV infection, I just shortly want to introduce the different stages of the infection, which are divided by the different by the level of the HPV DNA in the serum, the ALT level indicating liver damage, and also the different um, antigens of the virus. And in the first stage, which can um, last um, many years, the HPV DNA is very high, the ALT level is low, indicating low liver inflammation. And then at some point, at some point um, the virus or the immune system tries to control the virus, so the DNA is decreasing, and we have an increase in the ALT level and um, indicating liver inflammation. At the next stage, um, the immune system kind of tries to control the virus, so um, the DNA and ALT levels 
increase this, this um, stage can directly go over to the functional flow um, stage. But in some patients, we um, see this viral relapses and flares and um, the increase in the DNA and the ALT level. Important to know is that the functional was just a minority of the patients and just in under 1% of the treated um, chronic HPV um, patients. And what I also want to highlight here is that the CCD DNA is still present in the hepatocytes of these patients. So we really need to understand which determines the transition between the different stages, and also we need to improve the treatment strategy. So why are T cells important in this infection? So when we have the infection in adults, um, most of them can build up an effective effector memory pool with polyfunctional memory, CD8, and also CD4 T cells. And when we have the infection in infants, um, we can detect a viral um, persistent persistence where the T cells reach, reach a stage of dysfunction and exhaustion. They decrease their ability to produce cytokines, um, to proliferate and induce apoptosis. And in addition, they express all these inhibitory markers and are not able or do not eradicate the virus efficiently anymore. An important research question is, um, whether this stage of T cell dysfunction can be reversed either by um, treating the virus or by targeting these um, different um, inhibitor receptors. So to sum this part up, um, HPV is still a high prevalent um, infection with serious complications and we really need a better understanding of the immunological changes um, to improve the treatment for the chronic infected patients. So the first challenge when we um, want to do research on viral infection and also on HPV infection is um, that we really need to understand and analyze or be able to analyze the CD4 T cells because they are an important part in the immune response, response against the virus. And most of the studies really um, analyze um, CD4 T cells after in vitro expansion, which for sure changes the phenotype. So our interest was to um, be um, able to directly analyze them ex vivo. And another problem for HPV infection and CD4 T cells is that we really have a limit, limited number of um, known epitopes. And these epitopes are for sure important to design do um, multimeres um, in order to analyze them. So our aims were to create an epitope library and to generate um, new tetramers and then to characterize um, the CD4 T cells and to um, really analyze them ex vivo. Our first approach, and this was nicely explained by Emily, was um, um, again the ELISPOT assay where we um, used our um, generated um, HPV library, um, which covers the whole HPV genome, and we stimulate acute and chronic infected um, patients with our library. First, we use pool, uh, pooled um, peptides and then um, overlapping, overlapping single peptides. And when we then um, um, got a positive um, response in the ELISPOT, we went to the next step um, where we performed the intracellular cytokine staining on um, T cell lines from the same um, HPV infected patients. And with this um, assay, we can not only detect um, the cytokine expression, but also um, activation marker. And for sure, we can distinguish between a CD4 and CD8 response. After we confirmed the peptide, we used different uh, experimental approaches, but also um, for sure databases to predict the optimal peptide. And then um, the end would be to validate a new epitope with the new tetramer in um, order to analyze, um, analyze um, the virus-specific T cells. And this is actually a ex um, perfect example for a customized um, tetramer from ProImmune. Here's an example for uh, ICS staining um, to different acute patients um, to show that we are able to detect um, CD4 
D4 and CD8 responses, and sometimes we also see um, uh, CD4 and CD8 response for the same um, peptide. For sure, it's more um, complicated to detect um, these responses in chronic infected patients. There, we could detect a positive response in 56 percent of our patients and it was much easier to detect um, peptides or potential um, epitopes or responses in the acute infected patients. Here I show you an overview of all the different um, numbers of epitopes we could detect in the acute infected patients and the chronic infected patients and here um, are the different proteins and the different um, peptides we could um, detect. As you can see in acute infection, the responses really cover the whole um, variety of different proteins. Um, but when we look in chronic infection, um, we see a lot of um, fewer responses in these um, cells and it's even harder to detect a CD4 um, response than a CD8 response. After identifying new um, epitopes, um, as I said, the goal was to, um, to use um, tetramer staining in order to um, analyze the CD4 specific T cells. And here I show an example of a tetramer staining for all the different stages in the acute infection. Um, we can detect the tetramer um, positive cells without further the enrichment, but for sure we have to use a lot of um, PBMCs. But when we look in the chronic and zero converted um, patients, we really need to enrich um, the tetramer responses in order to detect um, the T cells. And to um, with this approach, we really can um, increase our sensitivity to, um, to detect the CD4 T cells. When we now, um, so now we use the different um, tetramers, some of them are also from proimmune, some of them are new, we detected um, and screen our cohort and use the patient with the matching um, HLA type. We were interested whether we can really detect these um, um, responses in our cohort. And as you can see in the acute patients, we have, um, here's the, percentage of um, patients where we had a positive response and in the acute ones, we really could detect in a high percentage of them, um, we could detect the virus specific cells and also some of the tetramer, um, tetramers were very um, good in detecting the cells in the acute and the zero converted patients, although we have a fewer number of um, zero converted or functional cure patients overall. But when we look in the chronic infected patients, we really, um, it was much harder to detect um, the CD4 responses in these patients, indicating maybe that uh, CD4 T cells, um, T cells are associated with um, zero conversion in um, chronic HPV infection. As I said, we also want to for sure now characterize these cells and want to see whether they are functional or um, and for to do so we first analyze the memory phenotype and on the left hand side you can see our gating strategy and how we define the different um, memory T cell um, subpopulations and here I show the um, percentage of effector and central memory cells in the virus specific cells and what is at least interesting um, for us is that we can detect effector memory cells um, a high uh, frequency of percentage of effector memory cells in all these different stages where we see a uh, high um, both population central memory cells and effector memory cells in the acute post control and the patients with functional cure. For sure, we also um, studied um, different inhibitory markers and activation markers. And I just show um, PD-1 as a um, perfect example for an exhaustion, but also activation marker here and show the percentage of PD-1 expression in the virus specific cells, which is very high in the acute infection indicating activation of the cells. But interestingly, when we look in the chronic infection, this, we have a high variety of PD-1 expression in these cells. 
more important than the expression of these markers is for sure the function of the cells. So therefore we re-stimulated the, um, the cells of the different, in the different disease stages with the viral peptide and analyzed whether they are able to produce cytokines and, um, um, in these stages. And as you can see in the acute and the functional cure, um, stage, we were able to detect the different um, cytokines here, interferon, TNF, and um, IL-2. But when we look in the chronic patients, there were a reduced or um, reduced number of cytokine um, expression in these cells, indicating that CD4 T cell function can be associated with a CO conversion and functional cure in chronic HPV infection. With this, I would like to um, summarize um, this part of my talk. So we are able to identify CD4 um, T cells in chronic HPV infection. And we could see that in functional cure, um, the CD4 T cells are polyfunctional and are able um, to produce um, cytokines. So another very interesting question when we study viruses is whether the phenotype at site of infection differs from the phenotype of the immune cells in the circulating blood. So for sure for us, it means we have to study the T cells within the liver. And as you can imagine, it's um, not that easy to, um, to study these cells at site of infection because of reduced access to liver samples. And um, for sure, liver biopsies are only available at time points when it's clinically indicated um, to do this procedure. So our aim was to um, build up a system where we can access or get liver samples on a regular basis. And also we wanted to um, have a very comprehensive um, a possibility to analyze the intrahepatic virus specific T cells. And the first indication um, or at least in our lab when we studied HCV infected um, patients and looked at the T cells within the liver, we could see that just the liver environment um, affects the T cell phenotype when we look at the um, HCV specific um, T cells, but also when we look on the unspecific T cells. So just the liver environment and not um, the virus specificity changes the phenotype of the T cells. And when we then look um, deeper into the different stages of the HCV specific um, CD8 T cells, we see that there might be a different pattern of inhibitory um, receptor expression in the different stages of um, HCV infection. So we also wanted to investigate T cell, um, the T cell phenotype um, of HPV infected patient. And therefore we used the approach that we collected um, blood and liver samples of um, uh, chronic and acute infected patients. And therefore we used um, fine needle aspirations of the liver, not liver biopsies, because it's minimal invasive. We have a rare complication rate and it's easier to be um, repeated. After that, we perform a single cell sorting of the HPV specific um, T cells because we, uh, and then um, perform a smart seq analysis to really have a comprehensive um, phenotyping of these cells because for sure we cannot perform a whole fax panel with this limited amount of um, cells. Here's an example of a um, staining of an F FNA um, to show that we are able to detect not only T cells, but also un other immune cell phenotypes like B cells and monocytes macrophages. And it's also possible to use frozen FNAs, um, which makes this whole approach um, feasible as a feasible um, solution for us. More important for us, the virus specific T cells, and um, we are able to stain them um, in the FNA samples. And often the frequency of these virus specific cells are even higher in the liver because they are enriched at site of infection. And also the whole immune composition in the liver is different than it is in the blood. 
Yes, as in proof of principle experiment, when we look in FNA samples of HCV, specific HCV infected patients um, before and after treatment, we, you can see that we have a high frequency of CD4 um, viral specific T cells within the liver, and we are able to um, really detect or analyze different um, activation and exhaustion markers on these um, virus specific um, T cells. So we are still in progress with our HPV um, project, and I just want to show this um, nice clustering, at least nice for me, to show that it's in principle possible to um, analyze these um, virus-specific T cells in the liver. And um, this is, um, project is still ongoing. So with this, um, I would like to summarize the last part. So for us, the liver, um, FNA samples are an optimal um, procedure to be able to analyze the T cells in the liver and to investigate the um, changes which might happen in the liver in comparison to the blood of these patients. Now I would like to uh, thank all the people who are involved in our HPV um, projects and for sure Georg Lauer who is the PI of all these um, projects and I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leah. Um, again, what a, a lot of data there in relation to HPV. I'm just gonna kick questions off. Um, so you, you were touching on the challenge of detecting these low frequencies um, in the uh, chronic patients. Um, and with the class two tetramers, um, I guess the way that you were doing that was to, um, to do an enrichment pro protocol. Um, before staining with the tetramers. Um, can you just sort of take us through how you're then going about accurately back calculating the frequencies for that? Is that just purely to do with the percentage of uh, recovery if you're doing a sort of CD4 enrichment? How are, you, how are you doing that analysis? So we actually, for sure, we have to do an enrichment. So we um, always use um, max speeds to enrich the tetramers. So P, we have PE and APC tetramers, and then we um, use a certain amount of cells. So PBMCs, for sure, we calculate um, the cells before we um, before we stain them, and then um, when we perform the fax analysis, for sure, we also have um, the frequency of these cells, and we always rely or we calculate them on the um, CD4 or CD8 um, positive cells. Mm -hmm. We get yeah. the frequency of them. Thank you very much indeed. We really appreciate it.